We have a very special tree today on Tree Talk, uh, butternut or white walnut, Juglans cinerea. Uh, related closely to Juglans nigra, black walnut. They share a lot of traits. We'll get into all that. The first thing to me that stands out of white walnut is the bark. Um, just like with all of our hickories, which are in the walnut family, Juglandaceae, we have these intersecting uh, ridges and furrows. They kind of make diamond shapes, X's and Y's. With white walnut, they are flat like this and very broad and smooth. So they look like ski trails. They remind me of the, oh boy, just, they remind me of the Northern Red Oak, if you recall, those ski trails. So kind of like a Northern Red Oak version of Black Walnut. Um, they are a little bit windy. Uh, as far as the nuts go, butternut has uh, oblong football shaped nuts, sort of similar to a pecan, whereas uh, walnut has those, you know, very round, big, um, uh, nuts. Um, for leaves, they are pretty similar. Uh, white walnut is often a little bit smaller than our black walnut leaves, um, but just like black walnut, they are compound. Now, how can you tell if a leaf is compound or simple? Um, compound means that we have multiple leaflets per leaf. So this is not a leaf. This is a leaflet. This is not a leaf. This is a leaflet. This entire thing that I'm holding here is a leaf. Every leaf on a tree is associated with a bud. So if we look at the axle, uh, which is the space in between a stem and a leaf, you'll have that tiny little bud there on uh, a compound leaf. Whereas if we look in the axle of the leaflet and the rachis, there's no bud. So that's how we know that this is a leaflet and this entire thing is the leaf. Um, while we're here zoomed in on the stem, a couple things to look for. Um, the uh, white walnut has a somewhat similar bud scar to black walnut. Um, but it is flat on the top, and it's a little easier to see on this younger stem here. But, um, here we go, see the flat on the top, and then it actually has a little fuzzy patch right uh, uh, north, if you will, uh, right above the, um, the bud scar. Um, the terminal buds of a younger stem, to me it looks very, very similar to the terminal bud of a black walnut, but is, it's this, this gray color, this tannish gray color, uh, whereas it's kind of a chocolate brown color in our black walnut. And then just like with black walnut, the axillary buds are kind of more rounded, uh, and then they'll elongate a little bit later. Um, on the older stem, so many stems to look at, we have uh, for uh, white walnut, for butternut, it's very conical like this, whereas with black walnut, it's, it's very blunt. Just like with black walnut, the stems are super stout, and just like with black walnut, we have a super cool trait that is relatively rare in trees. We have a chambered pit. So this only will show up on, there we go, on uh, stems that are over a year old, once they kind of get some diameter to them, but the pith there, the, the center part of the stem is chambered. So that is an excellent ID trait uh, to help you uh, tell that we have a walnut. Again, both black walnut and white walnut butternut will do that. Um, so uh, let's talk about the, the form and the ecology. Um, the uh, white walnut butternut is not very tolerant of shade at all. It really needs to be growing in the open. It is mostly planted by squirrels um, uh, who are burying those butternuts um, and uh, then they'll, they'll grow up. So very weedy, uh, kind of like our black walnut and spreading like our black walnut. Like our black walnut, they have good seed crops about every two or three years. They don't produce a good mass crop every single year because if they did, the squirrels would eat every single one. Um, and it's not just squirrels who are eating these nuts. Uh, it's also uh, prized uh, by humans. It's called butternut for a reason, a very, very tasty nut. Um, and it's, it's been uh, used by humans for a very long time. However, this species is imperiled um, in many states in the region where it grows, which is Eastern North America. It's actually uh, endangered, um, but it is, uh, has declined substantially um, in the past hundred years because of an introduced uh, fungus. So this is the butternut canker. Um, it has multiple different vectors. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I, think, I believe it's a secondary infection, a fungal infection, um, but most, I think it's 90% of our uh, butternuts have been wiped out by this. So it's really uncommon to find. So every time I do, when I see this beautiful uh, ski trail looking park stand out to me in the floodplain, I get really, really, really excited. Um, it is not a very tall tree, not a very long lived tree. Um, it's gonna grow uh, about, you know, 100, 150 years. It'll produce nuts 
pretty quickly for a mass producing species. We're talking 30, 40 years, which is great when it's, you know, prized by humans for, for using it. Um, but because it doesn't get very big, the wood, although it is really high quality and people really love to use the wood, um, it's not a, you know, super, super important timber species, especially now that um, it's been, you know, wiped out across a lot of its range. Um, it does stump sprout very well, so if you were to cut it in the base, it would, it would stump sprout, um, so it is good to regenerate um, from clear cutting. Um, but it's usually not in pure stands anyway. It's usually in mixed stands with black walnut and other uh, flood, floodplain species. We're almost always finding it right next to creeks. I, I don't think I found it further away than 50 feet from a stream myself, um, and uh, I don't really see them very often either. Um, so there you have it, white walnut, juggling scenario, really beautiful tree, a really excellent find, um, and a really tasty nut.